Tensions between Ghana and Venezuela have fallen off the peak they hit around the time of the referendum. However, the situation on the ground hasn't really changed much. Venezuelan migrants are still coming in in large numbers and the government maintains that the majority of Venezuelan migrants have Guyanese heritage. The official narrative about migrants has been papering over or even outright ignoring glaring issues like human trafficking, squatting, and violent crime. I'm the specialist. Let's talk about how misleading narratives and mishandling migration can worsen the crime situation in Ghana. Before we get into the main topic, here's a word from today's sponsor, Washington Law Firm. One medical mistake can permanently change your life or the life of someone you love. These mistakes are too common in America, causing injury and sometimes death. If you suspect that you were injured as a result of a medical mistake, call Washington Law Firm today. Don't lose your opportunity to get compensated. Don't wait. Book your free consultation with Washington Law Firm by calling 718-877-3100. Or find us at 455 Utica Avenue, Brooklyn, New York. If you'd like to advertise with us, be sure to make contact via our Facebook page. You can also inquire about hiring me to host your events, record voiceovers, or radio ads. The beautiful voice that you heard in the ad on this video is also available to you along with many others. On March 14, 2024, 41-year-old Chinese national Li Song Yang was murdered during a robbery at his supermarket at Etringbang Landing, Kayuni River. Yang's wife was also wounded during the crime. The bandits made their escape with an undisclosed quantity of raw gold. However, that's not even the most interesting detail about this particular case. Three men were charged with the crime, and according to police headquarters, two of the three men were Venezuelan nationals. This detail becomes very significant when you zoom out and realize that this incident is another notable crime in a growing wave of crime committed by Venezuelan nationals. Back in January, Minister of Home Affairs Robson Ben expressed grave concerns regarding a notable increase of Venezuelan nationals within the prison population, describing it as the most rapidly expanding demographic. During the Ministry of Home Affairs end-of-year review press conference, Minister Ben revealed that there are presently more than 20 Venezuelan nationals incarcerated, engaging in a wide array of crimes including murder, illegal possession of firearms, and minor offenses. I think the fastest growing population in the prison is the Venezuelan young men and women who get involved in things. We have 23 in the prison system for a range of issues, the minister said. Attributing the surge to the influx of Venezuelan migrants in Guyana, Minister Ben pointed out the challenges of dealing with the migrant situation. He stated, Our work is cut out in dealing with the migrant situation from Venezuela and from other countries and supporting those who come making sure they are vetted and identified for proper purposes and are supported in our community. The minister spoke well and chose the right words to address the questions asked of him. However, how effectively can we vet non-nationals with little to no documentation and limited means of reviewing their track records? This question becomes even harder when it comes to illegal immigrants or those who arrive across the border undocumented. Looking back at the Chronicle article, the minister referred to a case involving the arrest of Elior Vera Venez, Romel Massim, and Jimenez Rojas in October 2023 for possession of firearms and drugs. They were charged jointly with four offenses, two counts of possession of narcotics for the purpose of trafficking, the possession of two Beretta pistols and a Glock pistol without licenses, and the possession of 25 matching rounds of ammunition. In a further distressing occurrence from December, Simon Wills, a Venezuelan citizen, was incarcerated for the decapitation of Chetram Ramjetan, a 42-year-old resident of Kilkoi Settlement, Quarantine, Burbese. We can also look to another recent story from early in April, where a Venezuelan duo was caught attempting to traffic 536 kilograms of cocaine. The men were held on March 29th during a joint operation involving the GDF Coast Guard and the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit at Virgin Ugen in Region 3. We have to acknowledge that these incidents do not necessarily represent the majority of Venezuelan migrants. They merely represent the inevitable symptom of uncontrolled migration. It does expose something else though. 
In an earlier video, I discussed the inconsistency in narratives between the various migrant groups. Considering the narratives that the politicians pushed and this growing wave of crime, it makes you wonder why we haven't heard any of the politicians that were ringing the alarm bells in the late 2010s about Haitians, even Cubans, but you don't hear them saying the same thing now. So obviously, these trends and crimes only further highlight this inconsistency that I spoke about. How bad does it have to get before we start hearing some of the rhetoric we heard in 2019, for instance? Did we hear at any point that we have a large and rapidly growing Cuban prison population? Did we have a large or rapidly growing Haitian prison population? What about any other migrant group? Do we have a large or rapidly growing Chinese prison population? I don't think so. And once again, because people will inevitably be obtuse. The acts of some bad eggs do not necessarily reflect the entire group. However, it's clear that people and politicians seem to conveniently use the minority to judge the majority. Perhaps the problem is getting worse due to a lax approach to policing migrants encouraged by politicians who appear to care more about themselves than the Guyanese people. The irony in all of this is that I don't even have to compare the treatment between migrant groups. We can compare the treatment between migrants and the Guyanese. However, I'll leave that for you, the audience. What do you think about the increase in crimes perpetrated by Venezuelans? Do you think the government is doing enough to address the problem? Why do you think these types of crimes are on the rise? And what can we do to mitigate that problem? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Be sure to like the video and share it with your fellow Guyanese that need to hear this information. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.